over here to the streets of Miami here, guys. We got the Miami Heat laying a big price here, minus 10 to half versus the Hornets here. Um, they're laying a good price for a reason here. I'm sure Josh is going to tell us. But uh, money line for the Heat, they're laying minus 550. If you'd like to rock with the underdog here, the Hornets, you can get back plus 415 if you think they can get the outright win. Over and under sitting at 214 and a half in this one, Josh. Uh, tell us why you like the Miami Heat tonight. Uh, kind of easy because I hate the Charlotte Hornets right now. They, they, for me, are the worst team in the NBA right now. They're playing the worst brand of basketball uh, at both ends of the floor. And, you know, they come into this game in the worst possible situation. You know, the back-to-back three and four, but five and seven, the absolute death spot uh, for teams uh, in the NBA in terms of scheduling. So you do that and you do that shorthanded as well because there's still going to be no LaMelo ball. There's still no Gordon Hayward. They still are without... Um, Martin as well. So they're missing some pretty key pieces to that rotation. There's a chance they might sit someone else as well just because of the uh, minutes that they've had to log over the past seven days. So Miami, on the flip side, you know, a couple of days rest, uh, absolutely primed. You'd expect a pretty big effort from them here. Tyler Hero questionable. If he's good to go, this number probably does jump up to about 12, I think. Um, If if he doesn't play, I don't think this one moves at all. I still think it's uh, value on Miami. And here, I, I make this 12 even with hero listed as questionable but um like i said that might just be because of how low i rate the hornets i don't think they're doing anything particularly well offensively they don't look anywhere near like the team they were last season i think the issue is that they brought in a a head coach who wanted to prioritize defense but it's almost impossible to do that and have charlotte play in the same manner that they were last season so something had to give and yeah their defensive numbers are a little bit better sort of closer to mid-tier if you will but uh when you hurt the offense, the way that it's doing at the moment, it, it leaves this team in, in a situation where they're going to struggle to keep up with the better teams in either conference. And Miami, are, you know, everyone knows I'm not necessarily high on Miami this season, but I just think that this matchup for them is absolutely perfect. I think that offensively, they're going to get whatever they want. And defensively, they're probably going to get made to look a little bit better than what they are just because the Hornets are really struggling to get anything going. They don't want to play in transition at all. And if they're going to play in the half court, it's only going to suit the heat here. So, it's a low total, and when there's a low total, I can understand uh, people skeptical to lay a big number. But I think in this particular instance, uh, it just highlights how much it's going to suit the Heat in this matchup, where you know the game's going to be played primarily in half court sets, and as a result, the Heat are going to be able to get what they want both ends of the floor. Yeah, that's a good point there. And the Hornets would hate to play in uh, half court as well. They love to get up and run and gun. So if the Heat do smother them with their defense here, Ski, might be a spot to maybe hop on Hornets team total under as well, uh, especially if they rule some guys out here. So how you think? That was a great breakdown by Josh there. He's basically talking me into the Heat here with the Hornets already playing lackluster and they're being uh, fifth and seven nights as well. Definitely a fade spot, Ski. You like anything here? Um, yeah, just to kind of back him up a little bit, I didn't take the heat uh, for purposes of the show just because, you know, I have enough picks compared to everybody else. But I, I do have it in my pocket. And just looking at the Hornets, they've been pathetic. I mean, they won the first role game, but after that, a couple bodies fell out of the lineup and they realized they're actually not good. And now they've just been getting blown out every time they're on the road. I think, was it the last four? Or no, my bad. The last three, they're, they lost them by an average of 23 points per game. So... Uh, that, that's not a team I'm going anywhere near putting my money on. I would it be heat, heat or pass. And to what he was saying about the pace, you got both of them bottom 10 in pace the last five games. Um, the one thing the Hornets have been doing is defending the three-point line well. So I like that um, towards the full game under. I think I took the full game under off too because I got in early um, and the number has been plummeting. But that Hornets team total under – it's still good. They have not reached it all of November. As long as it's above 100, like they've only scored 100 one time this month. So Hornets are struggling bad, and um, I think that's a really good play right there. Hornets team total under. Yeah, that's a, that's good right there. Yeah, sitting at 102, and if I mean if you can barely get in 100 in today's NBA, that means your offense is really struggling. They're really missing Lamelo Ball, and I feel like without Lamelo Ball and Hayward, their offense is. Uh, it re- it's really trash, man. So be interested to see if Rozier and, and Oubre, guys like they can keep him in the game. But I don't see it tonight. I believe Josh is going to cash that one with the heat in that way, my guys. 